I had known Dan Fasano, the founding director of the Good Company Players, for quite a number of years, actually through broadcasting. He, he was a teacher. Like many teachers, he needed another job during the summer to kind of make ends meet. And he would work at Channel 30 as a floor man. When we started Good Company Players in 1973 as a summer company, I went to Raj, who was the news director at Channel 30, because I knew him for coverage to let him know what we were doing. And eventually, by the third season, we actually got Roger involved in a show. He's a good singer. They started in downtown Fresno. They performed first year at the Hilton Hotel, and uh, uh, later at the Memorial Auditorium, later at the old Del Webb Townhouse Hotel. Um, and they did summers only. It gets hard to keep doing that because when you perform in a location like that, you have to every night set up your set because you're in a ballroom that's used for other purposes. Do the show, take down your set, and so on for the next night. And it's like being a traveling show that never travels, it just stays in the same place. It was difficult for them. They wanted a permanent home. They wanted to expand to uh, uh, year round from summers only. At the same time, you know, Dan and I, because of our friendship, talked about this and wouldn't be great if, and how could we do that, and so on. And at one point, you know, you stop talking about something, you either decide you're going to do it or shut up about it, and we decided to go ahead with it. Both of us looked, and then we finally found the old Sprouse Reeds in the Tower District and decided we were on our way, and that was 78. I left uh, my job in television in July of one year, and we didn't open until June, the end of June of the next year, 1978. Uh, so it was a year of working on putting it all together. But that's what happened, and we opened on uh, June 28th of 1978 with the production of Gypsy. Uh, at that time, uh, the building was almost finished, but not quite. I, anybody who's had experience with construction. Uh, I think would understand this, where we had to put off opening dates several times because things weren't quite ready and weren't quite ready. And finally we got to the point where we just had to open, we couldn't put people off any longer because people had bought tickets were expecting to come. And so the railings weren't quite in yet, we had ribbons and tennis balls, the kitchen wasn't done yet, so the first two weeks we catered food in. Um, uh, John Pohl, who used to uh, work at a golf course here, was the caterer for us at that time. Uh, and we went on and did the show. We probably got the plumbing hooked up roughly an hour before the first people came in, with lots of volunteers helping out. Uh, Gypsy is the show that has kids and animals in it. So out in the back alley we had pens where we had a sheep, and we had dogs and other animals that appear in the show. We had a 12-piece orchestra backstage with no way of really seeing what was going on except for the conductor to lean backwards and look through a crack in the curtains. So it was a total mess. It was totally exciting. People had a great time. It was just a smash opening and um, it was a, 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 a very tense and very scary and great way to start. Our expectations are huge, hugely high for ourselves. We expect that the meal and the service and all of that, and I, I'm speaking for Roger now, and, but for both of us, we expect that that's extraordinary. And from the time that the overture starts and the show takes off, we expect that to be extraordinary too. So why is it a good combination? Because it's good. I think over the years, what we have tried to do, I, dinner theaters in general have a reputation, I think for, you go to see the show and the food's okay. You know, it's good and wholesome food and it's okay, but it's not something you would go just for the food. And we've tried to, over the years, get to the point where that's not true here anymore. And we, in fact, have people who come and who say, you know, the food here is just reason enough to come uh, and we wish you were open other times so we could come and, come and eat. So I think we've achieved that. And I think we've achieved it largely uh, because of the employees that we have, the people who are so uh, dedicated to this place. We change the menu every time a show changes. So we do six menus, new menus, uh, a year. And so, which is nice because I'm cooking with the seasons, but I'm also cooking maybe pertaining to the show. So I keep my, I think about the show, 
and what that kind of food is going to be. And then I also, if it's springtime, I know that I'm going to be using seasonal fresh produce from spring or something that's lighter fare. So especially in the summer, tomatoes are out, and so I will incorporate that. So what's nice about us and unique is that we have a kitchen that is ever-changing, and we're never doing the same thing over and over again. So the season ticket holders have a lot to look forward to, not just because of the show, but because of the menu it will always be something different. You know, magic is a hard thing because I, I think there's a certain energy that is, is a magic in every one of the people here tonight and when they work with their staffs and they have their particular menu and everything. There is, has to be magic in that to get it going, but so much of it is hard work. So much of it is commitment. So much of it is just believing that you're gonna do the next thing because that's the right thing to do. A magic for me selfishly comes from the training programs. The fact that we have young people, uh, people of all ages who have potential that come in and get to use this platform to show their talent, to develop their talent. And so that's pretty terrific. I think Roger could go through a list of doctors, lawyers, and Indian chiefs that worked as servers and worked their way up and had this as a job and are still in contact and so that's magic. So what has kept us together? I think we have a, a sense of community and a sense of expectation and I, I believe we really care about each other. Well first of all I would have to, to, to joke and tell you what that we stay in private we say it's the oh are you guys still here award? and. We're, we're delighted, yeah, it's nice to be recognized. Um, you know, all of us in the restaurant business get recognized on a daily basis by our customers. And that's probably the most important recognition when someone leaves your restaurant and says, boy, I had a great time, I'll be back. What more recognition than, you, than that do you really need? But when your peers say, yeah, they've been doing a good job over there, we think, you know, we think we ought to give them a pat on the back, that's important too. So yeah, we're proud and happy. The recognition that we're getting from the Restaurant Association is earth-shaking to me. And I know earth-shaking to Roger. You know, somehow when you're growing up, you wait for that time when they point at you and say, you're legit. And I think being recognized as a legit restaurant, which we know Roger Rockus has been with Chef Eric and, and that. And being recognized as important to the community. Sometimes, you know, we worked 38 years in this spot and 40 years as a company just doing things day by day. We work seven days a week. Every once in a while, it's good for somebody to say, yeah, we noticed and we're proud of you. So it's emotionally fulfilling to be recognized.